India's heritage of classical music matches that of dance, and the recent Sankalp Festival created a platform for musicians and vocalists in a variety of styles and traditions. Tevin attended the performance and met the artists. Indian classical music has two major traditions, namely Hindustani and Carnatic, but they share common roots. These can be traced back to Vedic writings and the ancient Natya Shastra, a Sanskrit text that discusses the full spectrum of the performing arts. This is the third year of the Sun Kalp Festival of Classical Indian Music and Dance, and it got me thinking, would there be music without the musician? Would it be something similar to the sound of one hand clapping? And would there be a point of a musician without an audience? Well, music is not just an art form, it's a form of communication. And Sankalp is helping to keep the classical dialogue alive. Although he's best known as a Kathak dancer and teacher, Sri Manesh Maharaj has also made great efforts to promote classical Indian music. And this includes creating an annual platform for musicians and vocalists. Manish, classical Indian music and dance have been around for centuries. So why, in your opinion, is it so important that it be preserved and promoted? Indian classical music and dance is an integral part of our culture. And my endeavor is to pass on the sacred knowledge to the youth in the hope that they take it further, the way it was passed down from my guru to me. Could you tell us about the artists who are going to be performing this evening? Sankalp 2017 has quite an impressive lineup of artists. We have Pradosh Maharaj with a Hindustani vocal recital, Mahesh Naruttam from Port Elizabeth. He will be giving us a Basuri recital, which is the Indian bamboo flute. We have Prithvi Karpurmat from Bangalore, and she will be presenting a Carnatic vocal recital. So yes, we are looking forward to quite a feast of Indian classical music and dance. As a vocalist in the South Indian Carnatic tradition, Prithvi is allowed scope for creative improvisation while remaining true to the two fundamental elements of Raga and Thala, broadly related to melody and time signature respectively. For me, music is a divine blessing. My mother is a Carnatic classical vocalist herself, so my basic training was through her. I started from the age of five. For Carnatic music, for me, what it has done is I have realized my inner peace and the way, the path to reach that trance state, and I actually don't want to get away from it. When I start singing, I realize that, and I, you don't want to stop. Traditionally, the Basri is made of a single hollow shaft of bamboo, and in the Carnatic tradition, it is called a Vedu. It is one of the instruments named in the Natya Shastra, indicating its provenance and status. People take the, the instrument very much for granted, but it's a long process. It has to be cultivated for a certain period of time. It has to be node-free. It's trimmed down. It's tried for a year or two. And of course, turned into beautiful instruments by master musicians or flute makers and such. Pradosh Maharaj performs in the Hindustani tradition. Having trained in South Africa under Sri Manesh Maharaj and Ram Krishna Das, Pradosh has performed in India, Germany and the United Kingdom. I'm actually an accountant by profession. Something's got to pay the bills. But music is an abiding passion. And for Kaladarshan to create this platform for people like myself who need to work and also want to pursue a career in music, it's excellent. Like its South Indian counterpart, the Hindustani tradition attaches great importance to the art of improvisation within the expressive scope of Raga and the discipline of Thala. Whatever their chosen field may be, these artists have helped to earn Indian classical music a growing following in South Africa.